So hello everyone and welcome to the client centric management webinar. My name is Adam and I would like to welcome our dearest guests, Asli. Uh, Asli, she's a founder at Techvisor. She is a well-known project manager in Turkey. She is a PMP and a international project manager with uh, more than 15 years of experience within uh, the project management. And uh, the reason why we invited her is that she's a true guru in the project management. And uh, I just love, and I'm just looking forward to speaking with you, Aslin. Hello. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for this great introduction. And uh, I'm happy to be here. And I would like to share my experience with both the Easy Project and with project management and client centricity. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, guys, before we start, um, in case you would like to ask any questions, please, uh, there is either a pool or there is also a chat. And we will go through your questions at the very end of the whole presentation. So do not hesitate to ask any question. Uh, here we have Asli, and uh, I believe that we will find uh, all the answers to your questions. So let's begin. Well, you may be wondering uh, what we're gonna cover today. So we we're gonna talk about how it, uh, what it is actually the client-centric management and how it looks like. So when people say client-centric management, what is actually in your head? Well, most of the time uh, you have some people as management and some client in the middle. Asli, what is the thing when I say client-centric management, what is the thing that pops to your head? Well, it covers all the communications and relationship with a client and making that a priority of your management system. Exactly, exactly, as, as, as you're saying it. Uh, by the way, uh, in case you'd like to know more and further about client-centric management, Asli released uh, two weeks ago, I guess, a uh, very, uh, very nice article where she talks about all parts of client-centricity, and it is also very well said right there. So, as you said, uh, Asli, uh, the first thing that we struggle with day in and day out is the communication not only the communication between ourselves as colleagues, but also among us and the clients, because there's always something that, you know, we expected you to do and we thought that we, we might have done for you. And there are all sorts of miscommunications with, uh, that, that do not basically align uh, to the project or to the contract that's been created. So basically the first thing that we struggle with is the communication. The second thing is collaboration because when we uh, talk about collaboration, we talk about how we as, for example, Techvisor or Easy Software work on the way how we can uh, make you guys happy with our client services and with our product. And of course, me as a sales manager and Asli as a project manager, we have two different roles because I'm basically the guy that basically draws all you know, the dreams at the very beginning. And Asli is then uh, basically the builder that builds up those real dreams for you uh, in the real life. And we have to stay really connected. We have to stay informed about what are your needs, what are your pain points, so we can cover them and basically we can solve the problem for you. The third thing is, is basically the clarity because um, we might be communicating with Asli uh, every day, by the way, which we do. Uh, and, uh, but we might, for example, miss a little thing, uh, a little nuance that will be at the very end, very important and maybe very expensive for us because we might have lost something of it. So having a clarity of what you are actually needing, 
what are uh, the pain points and basically what is also the progress of the whole project is something that it is crucial for the whole implementation process. And lastly, there is the change. What if uh, I get, for example, fired or what if something changed? Uh, what if something changes in the whole chain of uh, processes or of steps? So in here, uh, we must take responsibility and accountability for one another in, uh, in the reason that we would supply Asli, so uh, Asli would supply uh, me within the advocacy between you as our uh, as our clients and us as people that are basically uh, changing your environment or helping with uh, solving your problem or in a way uh, delegating uh, your rebuilding of the of the whole company. And that's client centricity. That's where the client is at the middle, in the middle of everything, because we are communicating with the client. We're also collaborating with the client on the, on the whole project, because we need to make sure that everything happens accordingly to your need. We need to have clarity. So you as our client are happy. And then if anything changes, we need to stay flexible in a way that we are able to uh, provide you the solutions that will actually fill out, uh, fill out those, uh, those vacancies. And here we are coming with the solution, with uh, what we are dealing with in TechVisor and in software. As for the communication, we're uh, using ticketing uh, for the communication, because if you do not know anything or if you have some troubles with something, you're using ticketing. Asli, do you have any uh, particular experience with uh, communication and ticketing within the client-centric management, how it actually helped you in your project? Um, yes, I mean, not just the ticketing, but having the client as part of the project itself, uh, the program itself, giving them an access and account uh, throughout the project is um, provides you one place where you can see all the history, all the communication, and everybody is notified on the things that are as needed. So I will show uh, on the demo how we use this communication through the tool in a bit. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, and as, uh, as you said, Asli, the, the ticketing and basically having the client part of the whole project is something vital to have the client happy at the very end. So then I can, again, take him as an account manager and uh, develop the business with, with him or with her. As for the collaboration, uh, we use uh, tasks uh, within the project management. And again, uh, these tasks are not only for me as a salesperson or for us as a project manager, but also for clients. So they have to deliver their inputs. So the whole project has uh, some flow, ha doesn't have any delays, and basically is heading to a successful uh, finish. So the task management here is very important and we will be also showing it in the demo uh, in a minute. As for the clarity, dashboards. Uh, Asli, uh, tell us what kind of dashboards you as a project manager uh, are seeing because then I will share my uh, point of view and we will compare a little bit these worlds. Um, this completely depends on the uh, company and their relationship with the customer and how the client or customer or the third parties would like to get engaged in the system. Uh, some of the clients are very into the project management. They would like to see the transparency, day-to-day uh, -day progress and everything. So in that case, we will make very delicate, complicated dashboards where still the project manager and the company can control what is uh, shown and what is not shown uh, versus sometimes uh, we only want to have some tickets and just like tasks on the customer or client and then they will have very simple 
client zone kind of a, an area where we can create this type of uh, dashboards. Also, we can create uh, pages, report pages, where uh, which aids for like weekly, monthly meetings, which will combine different information from different modules. For example, we can see the project cash status, we can see the span time, we can see the late tasks and everything in one single page as per the customer or that specific project's needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you just take this into account that Ashley is seeing this uh, this side of the world, and what I'm, for example, seeing is that, of course, that I have my dashboards with all the leads, opportunities, financials, uh, and my performances, but also what I'm seeing are the tickets of the clients because uh, within the client, cent uh, client centricity, it is crucial that not only the project manager, not only the help desk support uh, person, but also me as a sales manager, uh, I see what is actually happening by the, by the customer. Because for me, it would be a total nonsense that, for example, I would sell Asli uh, my product and then I would be like, okay, None of none of the things that are happening after this, after the sale, uh, is none of my job. And then I will be calling Ashley within like three, four months and be like, hey, Ashley, how's it going? And basically try to develop some business. And Ashley would be uh, very angry because the implementation didn't go as planned. There are a few bugs uh, on the product. And this is something that we need to catch, that we need to always keep the client at the center of our focus because today honestly it's not always about the product because the products are more or less the same and they are varying in those nuances and that's why people are buying those products but the, what is something that you will buy uh, the, con uh, the customer with is, are your services and keeping the client at the center of your focus uh, and lastly, uh, and lastly, uh, it's awesome when salesperson does the advocacy uh, between the company, between the client, and between uh, us as tech advisor and the easy software. Because then there is one person that is talking with the client, and there is not the John, Adam, Martin, Asli, and then the customer has no idea. Who to write? Uh, who to write what? And who's been dealing with this? So having the one single point of contact is also something very important. And lastly, the account management uh, within the change. So uh, if anything changes, uh, the the shared accounts and the account management uh, that we are talking within the client centric management. Is firstly something that we will show you in a minute uh, in a demo, and secondly, something that uh, provides us the flexibility to see all the information in one place and to basically oversee what is actually happening not only on the implementations, not only with uh, the product itself, but also what you, for example, mentioned one year ago that was important for you and that you would be uh, planning this year. Is there anything else, Ashley, that you would add uh, to this or are we going to jump into the demo? Let's jump in and I will try to cover all these areas during the demo. I think that's what we better. Okay, perfect. So hi, it looks like. Ashley, please share the screen with us. It should be, it should be possible. If all not, right. let me know. It should be okay. Can you see my screen right now? Uh, no, I cannot see it. Let's try it again. Screen. Yeah. Oh, now, I'll now it's coming. okay. Okay, now perfect. Great. Okay, so, um, would you like? To, uh, I mean, I can cover the pre-sales and sales. That's your forte, but I think that still uh, would be a good area to start with, with the dashboard that we're talking about. And I will go there in a second. Uh -huh. okay, so. so what you're actually now seeing is uh, the demo uh, version in the in Easy Project. 
And this is basically the card of uh, the account itself. Yes. Exactly. Um, so uh, I will just uh, very briefly introduce uh, this card. This is what we actually call the client-centric management. Because on this card, you will, uh, you're able to see basically everything about the client. Starting from uh, the partner uh, who the kangaroo brains that been uh, basically the people that accounted this account uh, to the company and that spoke with them, did all the dirty job and basically brought the business. And then we have the people, the John Black and Roman White, the people that are actually working for the PKD build limited and those people we know that there is john that i will always talk about the prices of the licenses of uh, prices of implementation and then there is roman white uh, which is the technical guy and that's the person that that us they will talk about uh, sorry talk with as for the opportunities we have the uh, we have the preview of the opportunities that we had in the past on also the ones that will happen here in this year. And that is really important because we can then calculate what are the lifetime revenues and also what are the upcoming revenues within uh, the next year. As for the data, there is basically uh, anything from the contact data, billing data, what type of industry they are in, what is their time zone, what is their website, and how long they've been with us. So they've been with us 89 days. Then moving forward to the sales activities. Uh, here I know from when we have this sales funnel as we always have, then we have at the very beginning the lead. So a person that is my potential customer, then I have opportunity. So there is, uh, so that's the person that has been already qualified and we're talking some business with them. We uh, found what they are pain points and we're trying to figure out if there is any basically points where we meet and where we can solve the problem. And then there is the basically the sell. And here I can see what are my communications with the client, not only on the leads, but also on the opportunities. So I know everything so and then the change uh there's a change uh where for example when i get uh, i don't know a higher position and for example these account will fall to another salesman they will know what's been happening with us and then here are the projects and this is something oh, where yeah. where a slave would take on <laughs> okay so maybe this is a good point to you know grab and uh, you know how the project manager fits into the picture from uh, as the PMI methodology dictates a project manager should be involved if you know, even before the project starts and that he or she should be involved during the pre-sales activities and during the proposal preparation even if it's a off the shelf one time product usually there are certain things that needs to be uh, tailored specific for the client so being part of the sales activities, to be able to see all of these activities and uh, read the meeting minutes, see the actions, uh, provides this information for the project manager. And if it's a complicated project, then we jump into the project management world where we can actually do the proposal as a project itself. And for this purpose, we can always use, I mean, I won't go into the details of the software, but I would still like to have this small lifetime of a project manager here. So I can start this new proposal from a template. Templates are great because that will help me do certain things with the technical team, legal team, sales team, and management, and they can get involved with the uh, activities right away. Uh, so let me show the project, for example, proposal project. Uh, for this PKV. And here, when we go to the Gantt, we can see the plan of this proposal. So we will have the technical bit first parts, and we will have the commercial bit parts. We will have a regular review, go, no go decisions and everything. When we're preparing these technical parts and other stuff, 
Again, the best way to prepare a proposal for project management is to have it uh, planned uh, as close to the reality as possible. So when I'm doing my project plan, I can also use the software to plan the project to the very uh, smallest detail. And I can see everything and I can have different simulations for different approaches. Because if it's a really big project and if it's really complicated, we may have to try and see different uh, situations uh, as per the client's needs. So for example, if we go to here, uh, oops, sorry. if we go to the project plan for this customer, we start everything with the stakeholders. So I will add everything that will be a part of this project, including the account PKV built. So this creates this link between the account, the custom client, and my project plan. I will also add people who will be involved in this project. And then I will start doing the uh, WBS and work breakdown structure. And during the work breakdown structure, if we will cover all the requirements provided by the customer during the pre-sales activities. So everything is recorded, all the items are covered here. If it's a classical project, then we will move on to the Gantt. And this is where we also see the collaboration and everything. So here I can add all the third parties that will be involved in my project. I can assign certain tasks to them directly, including my client. Uh, so this is the preparation plan part, but once this project actually starts, and if I provide the uh, um, accounts to my customer to log into the project, then they will be able to work on this together with me. So I'm also doing, during the plan, the budget. So I can do all the cost breakdown structure, and I can have a proper budget of the project. So I'll show it to you right away here. Um, so I can have everything planned um by based on the work breakdown structure so i can do the cost breakdown structure which will provide a better estimate for myself and lastly i can do uh, of course i can do the resources so i can plan my resource and my teams accordingly and if i have enough people in the company if i'm overloading certain subcontractors so this can be my plan version simulation a and I can also prepare another plan, which will provide different uh, profit margins, but maybe a safer risks and everything. So I can go and register my risks. And these are identified at the proposal stage, but then of course they can be assessed and controlled during the actual project. So, okay, this is how the proposal is ongoing. So what we have covered so far is that we made a proper pro proposal and we can see all the details and pre-sales activities and everything during this project plan. So once the project actually starts, then I can collaborate and I can uh, work with the customer. As I said, they will be able to see the tasks that are assigned to them. They can always uh, comment and this will be distributed and recorded under the tasks itself. So for example, they can say boiler, building, oops, building, um needs to be moved to west or something so i will have this request and discussions and everything covered here from the customer point of view as we said for the clarity purposes we can provide them different dashboards so i will just show you an example dashboard for the client so here they can it's it can be as simple as this where they will see the tasks that are on them they can see certain statistics and that could be it. Versus we can have very delicate information with including the project Gantt charts and statuses and everything. Going back to my project as the project manager, uh, once I have shared my uh, customer the information we are working on it, we can also take baselines, snapshots of the plans and statuses. So during each meeting, we can do the change management with the client and that is also a part of one of the C's, as you know, change, change management is very easy here. And since customer is already involved in the processes, uh, this provides easier acceptance and easier customer relationship management for us. So when I go to my projects here on the customer dashboard, client centricity dashboard, I can see all the projects that are related to this customer, like the proposal, the project plan, 
when this is actually running the actual plan. And then once the project is about to be finished, we will be able to do some help desk. For example, if this is a project where we will also do the maintenance and operations, uh, the operations and maintenance system will take over. Uh, let's say that this is a power plant project and they will start working on the system. There will be questions from the customer which fall into the help desk automatically. So a problem with the boiler building. Since the maintenance and operation team was not involved during the design, they, they may not be able to see what was going on. But here in this system, they could always go to the projects, they could always go to the actions, see the history. And as the project manager, I can see that there is a problem with my uh, client later on. And if I need to get involved, if I know the history, I can always get involved into the help desk test. So this definitely makes the customer relationship centricity easier for everybody from starting from the salespeople who needs to uh, keep the relationship uh, in a positive way, the project manager who knows all the technical details during design, and to the operation teams or the customer's own team, people who are uh, running the system or the product, working with the product later on, having the problems. So we can see everything in one single place. Uh, also, as I said, we could see all the tasks that are on the client. If they're late, there's been anything that needs to be changed. So from the project manager point of view, having a system like this uh, allows us to provide all the critical information. It gives the transparency. It provides the records. And for the change management and acceptance of the projects, it's really important what has been discussed and how much the customer was involved. In a system like this, we can see all the recordings, all the history, and it makes everything a little bit easier for the project managers. So anything you would like to add, Adam, to this brief review? Honestly, it was unbelievable how, mm -hmm. how you uh, explain everything. And I hope that everybody saw uh, all these connections to what we said at the very beginning, because you were talking about the communication, not only on the sales activities, but also in the pre-sales, on the proposal, uh, also the collaboration between not only us, uh, between me and Asli, but also uh, with the client. Uh, we've also talk about the clarity that uh, here we have very clear overview of uh, not only the pre-sales, not only the tasks, but also the proposals. Also in the gun chart, we have a great clarity of what task, basically how much money we spend on the task, how much money we will earn within the task. And uh, basically when 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 we when when you think about it um uh, our dear participants it is something that is providing you a very complex overview of the whole customer journey which is perfect when you have focus and influence on it because you know who you are talking to uh, about what you're talking, what are their pay points, what are the plans. And again, uh, the change at the very end, if there is any change, we have the records, we have the meeting minutes, we have all the information. So we can basically uh, watch after one another and uh, provide us uh, a feedback and also the support on the project for the client. If I just may ask, I say, if you go back uh, to the account, uh, exactly yes. to the account card, um, I would just like to uh, extend it a little bit further. What are those information? So, for example, on the contract, uh, you will see that there are some one time based and time based services. So, for example, let's say that uh, the PKV build uh, builds a uh, house of offices, okay? And this one-time contract is something that it is going to be built. And then the time-based contract is, for example, the warranty for the whole building that it's not going to fall apart within, I don't know, 10 years. So, and with this information again, we can uh, work. We can work not only on the business side. So for example, when you, uh, your end date of the warranty is coming, I can call you and basically extend the warranty. 
but also from the uh, project manager point of view, where you're actually uh, working with this information, what is need to, needed to be done, because within the contract, you have, for example, how many tons of concrete needs to be there and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, all these items. So for, for, for example, construction check, the constructing, uh, construction analysis, and of course the material that, for example, needs to be uh, bought to actually build, build the place. Lastly, we have these relations. And these relations are perfect in case you are working with multinational companies. So let's say that Keith KD Build is a multinational company and they are operating in Czech Republic, in Germany and in Turkey. And in each country, they have their own, uh, their own uh, little company. So PKV Build Prague, PKV Build Istanbul or Ankara. And then with these, I can basically uh, create a whole strategy with the head or the top account as a PKB, a PKB built uh, limited. And then we can basically break it down to, little, to those countries or to those places and help again, the clarity of the whole strategy uh, begin. And lastly, maybe the files, there are basically all the documents that are being signed, for example, contracts, documentation, for the project or uh, as for the uh, building itself. So thank you, Asli, uh, for that. Uh, you've been thank amazing. You. Okay. And uh, now I would uh, share my screen and I would uh, love to say uh, to all of you guys, uh, a big thank you for being here with us today. Uh, I hope that it's been helpful and that uh, we as TechVisor and Easy Software help you uh, with uh, another word, client-centric management, uh, which will be not only a link to this video, to this recording on the LinkedIn, but also on the YouTube. And we will also send out to each and every one of you also a follow-up email in case you would like to consult some of your cases uh, with Asli or me and uh, talk about whether client-centric management would help you within the business. So I would go and check if there are any, uh, if there are any questions. No questions. There are uh, 20 people uh, today. Uh, is there, oh, Irmak uh, Vilgili raised hand. So just give me one sec. And now uh, you, you're you able to speak your mic. So go ahead. Hello, thank you for the presentation and detailed uh, webinar. I have a quick question. With the new version, uh, do we have, for example, one uh, project manager may be responsible for more than one project? So the members also can be authorized for different uh, projects. Is there any opportunity to see the old, to see the calendar uh, who are responsible for different projects, for example? We see the schedule uh, mm -hmm. for, we see the project plan, but is there any opportunity for specific, for example, um, Irma, me, yes. and uh, also Adam, for example, yes. and Asla. So, uh, personal calendar they have so for the project is there any authorization depending on the authorization uh, sure uh, can we see the cool uh, calendar for personally yes um I, if i can share my screen i would like to show the go ahead but yes it just keeps turning back to yours okay <laughs> so, sorry 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 okay no, it's good. so now um let me just change my position back to a project manager usually uh there is like roles and permissions 
maybe okay. about project manager, uh, the department heads, the directors, people who has the access and permissions, will see the whole portfolio. The best okay. place to see the uh, loads and their task is would be the resource management. So when we go to the resource management dashboards, again, this can be specifically tailored for your needs. But here, I can see, for example, all the tasks on uh, kind of from different projects. What are their statuses? How much you know workload she has? Or I can go to Danny and see you know his uh, tasks and everything. I think this is what you're trying to see for as a calendar. Uh, mm -hmm. What uh, falls on them? Also, we have this information since that we are allocating from different projects. I can see who is the top user who is pretty low on work, what type of tasks again, because we can specify the different tasks like change management task can be a different thing, mm -hmm. bug or development. So I can see the loads on different type of tasks on different type of groups, departments, whatever you need to see as a graph. And this is a staff management actually staffing plan. When you're doing a proposal, you would like to know how much uh, time and effort will be spent on it. So we can see, for example, in August, we will have this many man hours on the system and we may not have enough people, right? So we can decide which department needs the most assistance, which group needs to be, you know, uh, help with a new colleague. Or if we cannot, again, we can see the things from the top. This is usually the top management with roles and permissions. Here on the global Gantt, I can decide I will not be able to hire new people, but I can decide that, okay, in that case, I will move this proposal effort to November. Mm -hmm. And I can just save this and it will change all the tasks and assignments of individual people directly to November. So this is how the portfolio management powers come with is the project. You can see everything as you described from individuals, their calendars, on a what, whatever you want to see. And then we can do certain things from the very top, which will affect everybody uh, at the very lowest level. Also, we have something, I call it a micromanagement tool. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go and see people's calendars here, mm -hmm. not yes, just for us, but mm -hmm. for specific users. And uh, for example, I can say Danny, I think is here, Danny developer, and mm -hmm. I can, um, go and assign things here directly on Danny if it's a new meeting or a task and I can select them. Uh, so, because when I give Danny a task, I usually give a deadline. So I mm -hmm. said that it needs to be done this week. Mm -hmm. And he has five tasks like this, but I do not dictate when he's supposed to do those things, right? With the mm -hmm. scheduler tool, we, I can actually dictate like work on this task at this time and on the other task uh, at another time. Let me show another view of it. Um, the mm -hmm. team scheduler, we have it on the dashboard. And here I can also see the tasks and I can drag and drop certain tasks uh, like here. And then, you know, it will automatically drop the amount of hours and I can just increase the amount of hours like estimations and things like this. So it's very good for micromanagement. And mm -hmm. usually companies who are selling their services consultancy, you know, needs to keep everybody really busy and they would like to use this. Mm -hmm. um, does it answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay. Thank you okay. very much. <laughs> good. Sure. Perfect. Thank you very much for, uh, for your question. Thank you. Um, anybody else? Uh, I saw one, uh, uh, I saw one question in, uh, I saw one question uh, on the Q&A and I've already answered it. Here are um, the contact details. Um, yes. So th there is a question asking about how can we schedule a demo? You can always go to easyproject.com or easyredmine.com and there is a trial button there. And once you start a trial, there's a 30 day free trial. And then we will be able to see you as a lead from the system <laughs> and then we will contact you. And then we can uh, schedule a demo specific to your requests and needs directly. So I think that would really help out because every company needs different uh, project management needs and we can definitely do a demo for you, uh, one to one demo. And exactly. a demo, yes. Uh, and also, uh, thank you, thank you for, for saying that, Asli. And also, in case uh, any one of you would like to talk directly to me or to Asli, uh, please see the contact details here on the screen. 
Uh, so you can contact Ashley at Ashley uh, dot Aldogan at com dot tr, or you can contact myself at Adam at Dolage uh, Zavina uh, at <laughs> easysoftware.com. Sorry. Uh, so uh, I guess that's all for today. Thank you once again, uh, Ashley, for having your precious time for us. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, Thank you for everybody that's been uh, here with us. We'll definitely share the video with you. So have a great day and uh, we hope we talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you, bye-bye.